Hello everyone and welcome to Lobster Roll Season 2! As we starting out, I'm your host Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, joined by Crow because his team didn't show up. Hello. Yeah, they didn't show up, but uh... <laughs> yeah. But looking at our first match, uh, looks like ASKM, which is uh, Penwin Damson Saber, and MFG, which is uh, Therxy... I'm Zao not sure and Rar. Crossing, right? I would call Thirksy. Yeah. Thirksy, yeah. Okay, that's just that's just what is what his her name is now. Uh, they is a yeah, pronoun. Like, <laughs> Sorry. They is a pronoun. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't tell everyone in the Zergai community this? I feel like I have to crusade this whole. I don't know. Like, I thought this we're, fight was over. Have, we're gonna have to say it until until it's just normal. But uh, yeah. Until so then, like, they're pronoun. Like, commentary and link to it. Yeah. Um. Oh boy, somebody's not in the Discord. After I told people to be in the Discord, what a joy. Um, Alright, well, you take care of that. And we'll be moving on to map bands, I believe, since this is... Well, this is, this is how the tournament goes. So you, you start with showing the brackets, because we had the brackets, so we're in the winner semifinals for the first match. The R Mumble Clan versus Bakhti for RTW and Blow will be going on simultaneously. And... Winner of that will be playing Pro, which will be likely the next match we watch. But now, first off, we have ASGAM and MFG, as MFG gets the first ban, thanks to a coin flip. Yeah, coin flips are pretty cool. I actually contacted uh, Sprug and was like, yo, can we have a can we have coin flip and RPS commands? Because that's that's way better than low seating to decide who goes first. Because yeah. low seating was doing all sorts of weird things last season. Yeah, so. it, was, it was just hard to tell who was lowest seed, especially once you started getting into, like, once you get into winner or grand finals, person can lose his bracket. It's like, are they lower seed or higher seed? And how does that, does that work? And Yeah, it was not a not a really good metric. Yeah. All right, so Shimmer Shore is the first one banned. No surprises there. Supreme being the next one. So it's banned three, pick one, I believe. Uh, it's, so it's ban free, and then they, there's a, there's a, there's a formality ban for the fourth ban, and it's pick one. Which no one yeah, ever does, so, so yeah. No one, no one ever does that, because really, it's, it's, it's more of like a time thing than anything. It works better in, like, weird, it actually does matter somewhat in best of three sets, because of DSR, but it's, it's mainly there as a formality. Yeah. So, two have banned so far. And MFG will be, I believe, picking as well as they just got the first ban. Yeah, they will be. They will be picking as well as first ban. So. Yeah, I can see if it matters if the picks go back and forth. Uh, yeah, it's. All right, and Tangerine yep, is out as well. Go. That leaves no C maps, unsurprisingly, and everything else actually. Yeah, someone really hated C on one of these teams. They're just like, nah. I mean, most people uh, do. That's pretty common. Yeah, and I honestly don't think Supreme is that bad of a map for C. I feel Supreme is one of the the most balanced C maps in no, this game. No, it's, it's just bad for a lot of other reasons. Yeah, it's just bad for a lot of reasons. Uh, mainly the fact that you just kind of don't get to play in the middle and you only end up playing C at some point in the game. So that or mid devolves into artil uh, artillery spam. Yeah, so. pretty much. But on a cool note, uh, 3 3 means we'll actually be seeing some more in game uh, unit compositions and stuff as compared to 1v1 where games end in like 10 minutes. So it should That's be true. pretty cool. Well, games might still end in 10 minutes, but it's going to be a more intense 10 minutes. Yeah, it's going to be a lot more hectic. Ten minutes. It'll be. Yeah, it's. Uh, I heard someone <clears throat> saying in the uh, the Discord earlier. They were like, "Oh, we actually get to see artillery," and I was like, "Yeah, good point. These games are actually going to like last long enough for somebody to build an emissary, <laughs> which is weird." Um, you don't discriminate for every Yeah. <laughs> uh. So well, we're still working out who's going to be picked, but. At this point, I 
I mean, 3v3, Fallen Dell is a popular map, but I think for 3v3, it's a touch small. It's it's a cramped map, and that was the point, is I was like, there's a lot of big maps on this list, so I wanted to make something that was preferably actually forced people to fight a little bit more conservative on their space, so. Because, like, on, uh, on, you know, maps like Cobalt Dream and Tangerine, Small Battlefield, uh... Like a lot of those maps, you you really don't have to be conscientious of space, and they're mainly macro expand maps. So at some point, you just have to be like, ah, you you just go out and territory ah. matters less in terms of like the actual ground you have to work with. But on small maps, uh, you kind of have to pay a little bit more attention to that. Well, it seems that Fallen Dell map. Pick. Yep, that is exactly right. <laughs> we are going to get that smaller map, so we. Well, it's going to be interesting. I I have expected this is going to turn into a lot, like a bit of a contested center, though Fallen Delta doesn't have a yeah. lot in the center to hold. It's mainly going to be uh, probably the top and the bottom, or north and south uh, contested, and then somebody's going to sneak something through mid, halfway through the game, and then that's going to be how they break the pork, the pork wall. All right, we but, have a prediction. Um, we'll, we'll see... That's just that's just my experience from from other maps with nothing in the center and everything on the sides. That is, I mean that's reasonable and it's especially with this one where, like I said, there's nothing in the center. It's not like Red Comet where there's a fair amount of economy there. Yeah. Or Comet Catcher where there's all of the economy there. Neither of which are available. Comet maps. Catcher is yeah. Comet Catcher is, is economy everywhere. There's just. It's super consistent. And I guess uh, Cobalt Dream is somewhat like that because Cobalt Dream is just a blue comet catcher, basically. It's nowhere near as bad. It's nowhere near. It's, like, it is it's not, not as bad. Yeah. It is not. Okay. I, should, okay, I shouldn't say as bad because a lot of people like comet catcher, but I mean, it's, it's nowhere near as grindy. Yeah. I don't know. I've had some like really weird games on co uh, Cobalt Dream to where like it'll be uh, Fencer into whatever the heck uh the land my unit is called now which i can never wolverines i guess badger actually um badgers okay yeah so yeah it's fencer badger and then you just end up like making a ravager ball and you just poke at people with the oh. ravager ball until the fight ends so yep. about right though well so far it looks like is anyone actually going for no one's going for vehicles on the western team on mfg but AS Cam is okay. AS... Pen win is that's about it. Yeah, let's get to it. My Lua UI really hates me because I'm at ninety five percent loading into this game. Oof. Uh, okay, there we go. PFS anyway. checksums are good. Okay. So starting out, we have AS Cam over in the east doing a pretty standard setup honestly where's western team double spider factory on jump bots on fallendale i'm really curious what exactly mfg is planning <laughs> on doing here because so far it's looking weird yeah yeah this is really weird um i'm not exactly sure what what the plan is here i assume it's some sort of weird venom recluse type nonsense in the north and then self just holds with with jump, but it, I I still don't know. This is really weird. I mean, well, I could see potentially going for. I mean, the jump I'd say more of an aggressive option, but I I'm more curious because the double the double factory, honestly, that I find weird. Yeah. Especially because nowadays plates are a thing. If you want if you want to double up on a tech on a factory type, you can just build a plate and then have a different factory instead as your plop. Yeah. Uh, I do find rovers interesting though. Rovers on this map is a brave move by uh, Pinwin. That's uh, because you get messed up by all sorts of weird line of fire issues if you try to do fencers here. That's that's true in the edges. The center I I I don't totally agree with. We'll see though. And honestly, I think fencers are going to be the choice taken considering jump bots are up. Yeah, definitely. So far, still Scorchers coming out here for Penwin, but that's merely a matter, that's likely a matter of time. 
Thirksy and Penwin both very aggressively taking that center with defenses. Penwin a little bit better prepared, though. Coming with their team as well. That's Saber setting up with those bandits. A little bit of trouble holding on, but at least able to get get Thirksy's commander to push back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, nothing can really fight Venom's early game too well, unless until you start getting uh, stuff with... I can see the Ronins. Yeah, okay Ronins have always been a counter to Venom's. Yeah. That's been... I'm actually a little surprised they're having a hard time now, but typically that has been the case, because Venom's don't have range. Yeah. Though there have been a lot of changes, so Ronin I don't think quite are as strong. It used to be the case that Ronin were basically the counter to spiders, and that got adjusted. Yeah. So it's not quite so stark, but it's still... That's still the unit I expect to see used, and that's still the unit that we're seeing used. Damson is going for that... Without any hesitation. Yep, definitely. Overall, though... I find it interesting that, uh... Go ahead. Oh, okay, so overall, though, ASCAM is having a little bit of a weaker hold on their economy. We see right now Zao over to the south pushing hard to basically stop Saber from taking any of the southern expansions. Yeah, also, can we talk about the fact for a second that, like, Zao is basically brand new to Zero K? <laughs> like, yeah. I think he picked up the game this past week. <laughs> I mean, that's actually, whoa, wait, really? I gotta check their account stats, because if that's the case, yeah, uh, I am impressed. Because he was, like, asking for Gade to teach him Zero K, and I was like, did you literally pick up the game, like... It might not be last week, but I know he's, like, really new to the game. Like, I'm, I'm quite impressed. He is, he is expanding very, very nicely here, so. Yeah, well, it's certainly the thing you need to do. I mean, it's certainly a lot easier doing 3v3, but, yeah, it's the thing you need yeah, to do. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you don't have to worry about being attacked from all sides, because that is, that oh, is the hardest is thing to learn. Dead oh, commander. Penwin, no, yeah, that, no, there's no jump, Penwin. there's nothing. Yeah. No, no, Zao no, that's, with that's, a commander kill right off the bat. Four minutes into the game. Already a commander down. MFG is getting quite the advantage. And of course, now he's able to convert this into an economy advantage. There's not really a whole lot that's going to be contesting. Saber, Saber's commander can come in and their army is in play. But honestly, oh, Zhao might be going a little bit too far. Yeah, he's going a little bit too far. He needs the he needs the backup and repair that pyro. Because pyro is expensive. Uh, well, they have been. And props for them to that. Yeah. That's not a common thing you see people doing. Though it's not going to matter much, not with the Scorchers coming in here. I don't think Zalquites realizes how surrounded they are right now. They Ooh, should, nice. but they wow, don't. Wow, really? Okay. Wow. A bad... Not, I can't say the Scorchers were the best option there, because they didn't really do anything. Um, yeah. Mainly it's just a positional positional thing right now. But uh well, although in the mid, uh kind of kind of what I was talking about, uh yeah, there, there's a lot going on in mid. So yeah, mainly mainly again the rovers being quite the thorn in the side for all the venoms coming in here. Though it's proving to be honestly not that effective. I mean, okay, yes, it's true, Damson is holding the line, but that's not what needs to be done here. The victory condition right now, or at least the Short-term victory condition for ASKM is going to be securing the north and to some degree, and resecuring the center, not even to some degree, just purely resecuring re the center. Penwin losing his commander, their commander, has completely eliminated their control over the center of the map. Yeah. And on top of the fact that RAR is being RAR, for those of you not familiar, <laughs> RAR <laughs> likes their commanders a lot. <laughs> They would play this game more if the commander was more easily a super unit. Like that that's been they love using commanders like wow. this. So this is really pushing the game forward on top of the fact that you know, Thirksy with their spiders is providing an amazing little bit of support fire. Oh, uh yeah, Saber's comm just died again. Oh <laughs> and I missed that. Well yeah, Zao it, it was bad, Zao. Yeah, but it Zao was just stealing it. Light oh boy, Ooh. yeah, this is looking double A particle beam. ASDM. Oh yeah, I mean double A particle beam with range for Zhao. Thirksy, same idea. Rar already way ahead with the double rocket launchers. I, I almost like this was the this was something they planned out. This was not just we're gonna go into the game and be funny. This is like planned out. Oh yeah, and it's working really <laughs> well. The one thing I'm I'm waiting for is any kind of, well, I guess, oh, rip, rip phantoms. phantoms, yeah, rip that's the thing I was looking for, because with the factors they have, that's the best option to deal with this. Yeah. 
And there are a couple. There there are some. But uh, currently on fire, yeah, but we'll see. And still, Rar's commander is completely vulnerable to them. They don't have shields to actually stop the shots from coming in, but the support force is always the problem. There's another shot coming in. Oh, what? What? Oh, what? okay. That was okay. that wasn't radar wobble. Or no. 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 Maybe. No. Maybe. What? I just. Uh. Okay. I'm just confused. We'll, Honestly, we'll, we'll I <laughs> would half recommend going in with spiders and throwing in a widow. Yeah. I mean, with 44 metal per second, I don't think. Uh, trying to do the math and ultimatum, but that would still take about a minute and a half to build, so I don't think it'd be worth it. Yeah, I I think what what uh what MFG here uh is supposed to do is they're just supposed to go top and swing out all of those mexes, but I'm not sure if they actually have the troops from right now to do that because they just did so For much MFG fighting. MFG to do that. Yeah, for MFG to do that. Yeah, okay. Um, but I think they're, they're doing a similar play in the bottom. It's just going to take a little bit. Yeah, this game moved fortunately, really Damson's first. Commander is the next one on the chopping block, and the last one available, too. Granted, Damson does have a bit more to hold the top of the map, but it's still looking pretty iffy. Wow, that much range, really? Oh, yeah. Rar's, Rar That's has been crazy. going eight advanced targeting systems. What is this? Oh, my. Yeah. 680 <laughs> Elmo range. They have artillery range on rocket launchers. Ready. No, go no. look Go look at Zao's commander if you want to see something you're not ready for. Same idea of oh, a light this particle needs, beam. This needs to stop. <laughs> this needs to stop. Skirmisher range riot unit, riot <laughs> armor, or riot armory. It is not fair. But that's what happens when you invest in commanders. Like, the thing um, is, this is with a relatively oh. even economy, so it's mainly just in the, the attrition. And honestly, the commanders go down, that's a problem. And Rar's commander under some heavy fire. And the Phantom is coming in. It's getting oh, decloaked, but it's nowhere near dead. And with the Rar and, Rar's commander in sight, the slings are able to do quite a bit of damage. But unfortunately, that is the only battle that is even remotely going as Cam's way. Zao and Thirsty on the south yeah. side of the map wrecking f shop all over the place. <laughs> Yeah, ASKM down to 37 MS, uh, middle per second here. I am fairly sure this is it, unless they can find a way to, to win this fight top and swing around over and grab some, yeah. grab some reclaiming mechs. But right now, like, they, uh, MFG has so much reclaim just in, in the south. And that's, that's actually surprisingly like not being used. Like, I'm, I'm honestly kind yeah. of shocked there aren't welders, or weavers coming around the side of the map. I am kind of impressed there's a nice little scorcher reclaim. going around here. Penwin staying on the harassment a little bit, but honestly, it's too little too late. What needs to be done more than anything is anti-heavy units. You need okay, Impalers aren't a bad it. idea. The Phantoms yeah. are the best idea. Shield yeah. bots don't really have much. I mean, you have... You have... You can disable things. It's... Uh, I don't know. It's not really... Racketeer's not really the way to go for this. They're okay, but... Yeah, it's yeah, not it enough, is. though. Penwin throws a towel. That's it. Saber agrees, and we have MFG winning quite convincingly in their first yeah, that match. Was, that was way more convincing than I expected that win to go. Uh, I thought with Penwin and Saber both playing, that was going to be a lot closer of a fight. Uh, but it, it felt very one-sided in momentum the entire game, so it was interesting. I mean, it, it's the thing about when you have a big commander push like that is most people are playing for army versus army and fighting a commander yeah. just requires a different set of units you have to be thinking in terms of as if you were fighting a late game strider but five minutes into the game but every factory does have units to deal with that although shields are a little iffy but the rest have, have single units to deal with that shields is kind of a combination of racketeers and I guess snitches yeah racketeer snitch is a combo but yeah. It's iffy. All right, so Mumble Clan did not show up, so I'm just going to DQ them. Okay, uh, so we're going on to so we another one. Pro versus house. BRB. Let's see. Yeah, well... Uh, wait, MC didn't show up at all? Wow. Uh, I think Catastrophe showed up, and that was about it. Well, anyway, I guess they're still on losers. They I suppose wait a little bit before they fight ASCAM, but otherwise, yeah, we are just gonna move on to the next winter semifinals. 
will be pro and pro and BRB, wherever that's going to be set up. B Kind of curious how this is going to play out because Pro is definitely the favorite to win this tournament. Yeah, definitely. Um, I I would like to comment on the fact that all of the Randys. So, oh. if anyone watching this stream who does not play Zero K often enough in tournaments, uh, there is there's there's so there's Randy who is a very well established figure in our community, and then there are Randy fans, which are like are the Randy henchmen, and they just kind of showed up and then just started wrecking people. Uh, one went from like bronze to uh silver or blue in like a month it was really crazy i believe um, the term is super giant super giant yeah the, see i know the color the rating like, yeah, no, the, the rating ordering is weird <laughs> i mean it's yeah giant is gold sub giant is basically it's like bronze gold silver blue i think Yes, yeah, so that's not. Sorry, that's that's. It's yeah, bronze gold. Uh, that's neutrons. Not silver, neutrons. blue, that's, purple. Yeah. Yeah. It's super giant is silver. Yeah. You're right. So. Super giant is silver, but that's above giant, which is gold. Mm -hmm. So it goes bronze, gold, silver. It's, it's a bit <laughs> whack. Because it's following stellar. It's following the black body radiation curve. It's not following yeah. precious metals. Yeah, which is strange. Um. Which, because how many people know the the black body radiation curve, but don't know per, don't know precious metals. It's like very astronomers who have very... never just have never <laughs> old astronomers. That's that's it. Astronomers over thirty, yeah, or over forty so, these days. It's a uh, strange. But yeah, it looks like we'll have uh, BRB versus Pro. I guess we're calling them BRB because they didn't have a team name. <laughs> yep. Uh, oh, yeah, we yeah, are on to the uh, map bands and such. That is a thing. So, intersection is the first one that has been taken out of the running. Which I am not surprised by. That's another craft map that we were talking about earlier. Although, even more yeah. so than Fallen Dell. At least Fallen Dell, you have kind of three lanes to work with. In this one, it's just corner to corner, and I guess one each player goes for a corner and one goes down the center, but... Yeah, it's basically it's just mm. a lane map. It's similar to Fallen Dill. Um, yep. I actually don't think this match is going to be entirely. Wait, Randy fans a top three player? Yeah. What? Yeah. What? what? Hold on. <laughs> I I was not aware of this. Wait, that, that can't be right. Top... Wait, no, no, wait. He is. He's at number three. Oh what? yeah. Wait, how is that? <laughs> Where's Mighty Twelve? Or Anir? Or well, I guess Golda would be number or, well, one or two. Okay, Nier's but... on here. Yeah, but but, but where 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 Manu twelve? What happened? Well, um, today we've conclusively I'm... proven that the rankings and the ratings do not line up. Oh, it's because it's on Matchmaker. That's why. Okay, it's uh they moved it over from casual to to Matchmaker. I think because it used to be set to casual on the homepage, mm. and I think they moved it to Matchmaker. Um. See, so, yeah, very strange. Well, anyway, yeah. Uh, so two okay. top three players are here, along with Exist, who is not quite that top three. I don't know. Valus Mineras is not a map. Please do not try to play Valus Mineras. They are not going to try to play Valus Mineras. It's just the map that was pulled up at first. <laughs> Someone asked, and I was like, no, 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 no. No, the, ma okay, the map the map list is up here. Interesting. Okay. All right. So intersection, Shimmer Shore, Sapphire Shores, which leaves Small Supreme Battlefield, which I half expect is going to be picked, but. I don't know what people are going to go for. Yeah. Tangerine seems like the most fitting for size, along with Ackland Wastelands. Cobalt Dream and Tangle are familiar. Yeah, that, that would be the sensible choice, I would think. Although, hang on. Who gets to pick... Okay, so it's BRB picking, which means they probably don't want to go for a big macro map like Ackland Wastelands. I don't want to give Pro the ability to just out-expand them. So I'd, I could see Fallendell. I could see Cobalt Dream, actually. Oh, never mind. They're doing their formality ban on Cobalt Dream. Yeah. And going to Tangerine. All right. That's that's cool. Actually, that was the one I expected in the first place. So, yeah. 
Nice. Yay, yeah. I feel good for having predicted a thing. Hooray! You did a thing, good job. <laughs> All right. So. Oh, wait, Randy doesn't have Tangerine. I don't what? think. A, wait, how is that possible? That Tangerine was a standard is... map. Actually, wait, no, I don't have yeah, the map but... either. I don't know what's going on. Wait. Okay, never mind. I was like, I know I have it. <laughs> I thought I had the map. Wait. Like I've, it might have, it might be a new version of Tangerine. That must that, be it, because I'm thinking I, I'm almost certain I've done stuff on Tangerine or played around Tangerine at least once. Yeah. Yeah, the only games I've played on this map are gigantic, like sixteen v sixteen nonsense. So we'll we'll see how this goes. Probably more sensibly. Yeah, probably. Not I hard. would like to see like somebody play air. In like a three v three match, like, I'm surprised cool. we haven't seen that yet because last when we were doing well, I guess you weren't here when I was doing the whole exhibition series for three v three last week, the pro versus purple rain, like show match. Yeah, there was error in two out of three of the matches. Yeah, and even in, like when we played two v two, like there was error in some of the two v two games. So that's been less common recently. Yeah, I was like, huh. I wonder if people just realized that like the only good unit in air is like. Swift, Thunderbird, Liko. <laughs> and it's these number of good units. Actually, Raven's also pretty strong. It's more that... Raven's okay. I think it's more in 2v2, there's a lot more utility gained from having double ground factory. Whereas in 3v3, yeah. there's more room to mess around with having air. I think Bakhtiv... Oh, Bakhtiv's going for gunships? Hey! <laughs> That's something hey, we haven't seen in a very go. long time. Exist, I Exist is the air player, be. too. So the thing is, Exist is the air player on pro. Yeah. Oh, Exist is here. I thought it was yeah. both of the Randy fans. No, Exist. Nope. Oh, okay. Oh, I haven't seen Exist playing forever. What the heck? Yeah, well, I saw him a bunch yesterday, Whoa. and they are the air player. Though they're quite flexible at switching off into a second ground factory when it's needed, but they are the air player yeah. on Pro. Or, sorry, wait, no, I'm thinking oh. of Ezra. Ezra is a more flexible one. Exist is purely air. air. Exist is like that. Yeah. They're going to build air, they're going to go hard on air, and they're just going to keep going with air for the entirety of the match, as long as they can get away with. Otherwise, though, we have Amp and Hover. Well, this is, yeah, so Amp Hover, fairly standard picks. Um, Amp I am a little bit though. curious because both of, um, I guess it's even, but like the, the middle is going to be really weirdly played out here because both teams are going to try to grab C. And then the air is just kind of do, gonna do whatever. So this is gonna be a little bit strange. Yeah, looking um, at it, I'm seeing. So the cloak, obviously, cloak block can't really do with the water, but gunship is far better at holding specific points on the map than air is, or than planes are. Yeah. Which makes me think that the strategy for Northwest essentially is going to be trying to slowly push into the western side of the sea and maintain that side of the map using gunships while cloak is held to ground. Whereas yeah. pro just has amp bots, they can hold the sea directly. Or rather, Randy can hold the sea, or Randy's fan can hold the sea directly, while Randy holds the eastern sea, which is contested directly by Ampots. Still, though, Gunship has been a little bit undervalued. I don't know if they're, like, I don't know if they're underrated, but they have not been used very often, and I'm, I don't know if that's for good reason, but I think we're going to find out pretty soon. I'm crying right now because I just what I want exist to do is I want him to land the swift and kill the constructor and he won't do it. <laughs> he needs to just land the swift to get rid of the wasp. <laughs> yeah, you can land the uh, if you land the swift on top of that mountain, it, it can kill the. Oh the yeah, wasp. that's true. Like, that's true. Uh, how is this? This swift is getting mad value out of out of Intel. Like it is. Oh, do, I wonder if they're gonna see the. Are they gonna see the geo? I don't know. I think they. Let me see if okay, they have. Double swift. No, they haven't. Uh, they, they haven't. Geo is completely oh, unknown. Boy. Well, not Geo from that. Is... I mean, we'll see if the Raven's going to come in here instead. Gonna... Battle spot okay, it. Battle well... spot it. That's also a lot of value. That's. Oh boy. I mean, it did say. AA is going to be important. Exist is a strong air player. They they are the air player. That is what they do. Yeah. Oh, at the same time. Bit of the weakness of the way that this approach is going. Duck's able to come up from the shore and start wreaking havoc. Not to mention, back to Dante hasn't actually had a chance to build up any offensive units. They're getting a Trident out now as a defensive option, but 
Beyond that, and the two wasps, they haven't really managed to get a whole lot. And the ducks already coming in here. Randy's fan able to lock down the factory for Bloa. And yeah. That has got to hurt. Bloa's yeah, because this duck is just going to go to the back, and there's like no way to stop the duck. Not trivially. Because no. they, they can kite this glaive. I think. It just kills the glaive. <laughs> it can't kite it, but it'll live yeah. long enough to kill it. And then the reinforcements will come in, but at the same time, Randy actually having a bit of trouble. Yeah. Fruity is, or technically Fruity is managing to hold them off well enough that it's... It's going to be enough of a defensive. Should be able to stop Randy's fans' ducks. Fruity coming oh, in here. Oh, entire pro is that testing. Whoa, that was weird. Yeah, they were at 63 metal for a while, and I'm, I think they're just over-reclaiming. But yeah, that, is, that was bizarre. <sighs> yeah, not Randy, but... um. Okay, so... yeah. Yeah, with that we have Randy still just completely wrecking everything. The angler is going to go down. Second angler is coming up, and of course there is the hacksaw, but the hacksaws are primarily an anti-raven tool. The swifts are the bigger issue, as this basically locking down Boxy Dante's ability to do anything on the map. Trident as well going to be out of position to stop that swift from coming in, on top of the fact that the ducks, as you mentioned, Crow, are in the back lines making everything completely leveled. Turning it all into rubble. Yeah. So, yeah, this is... I think this is... No, this isn't over, but it's it's real hard for for BRB at this point. Yeah, especially as we... Oh, actually, the Conjurer does survive. Maybe? No! Conjurer oh, the... Hurt. Died to the oh. duck's death explosion! Oh, that's gotta hurt. Oh, yeah. that conjure, if I was able to stay alive, Blow would be f able to rebuild this no problem, but now they got to set another conjurer up there, it's going to spend another minute or so with a weaker economy as Pro is able to continue to expand, continue to reclaim, and continue to harass. Yeah. And really, uh, oh, Randy built a storage. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, that, 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 they have 1,500 metal storage between them. They do. That's, that's funny. Um... But, so, I think... What the heck? The Trident doesn't kill all of these, right? They definitely just bomb the Geo. Yeah, they're, that's the best thing to do. Trident bomb. doesn't kill any of them. Yeah. Oh, and there's the Hacksaw. Oh, that's a lot of value. That is all the value. Got the Karasager, got rid of the defensive defenses. Completely ignored... The, I mean, one Trident is not going to do it. The whole point of that is just... You know, five or six to defend against either other gunships yeah. or stop Swiss from coming at you. Otherwise, yeah, See, not much. I'm a big fan of planes in 3v3 or 2v2. I am not a big flat fan of GS because GS is just slow. <laughs> like, if if there was like if uh, Bach of Tata had play had played planes, the the response to this is just literally Swift spam. It's just you you spam Swifts. Yeah, and then you let the ground fight it out. Um, but now, like, he's locked into this weird position where tridents don't really work, and overall, this is just like a really uphill fight for air because you can't like spam tridents the same way you can spam uh, swifts, and they don't have the same like position, good positioning as well, because like you can just you know, uh, alt click on swifts and they just go burr across the map, yeah. and then tridents still do that. <laughs> yeah, well, also. What I would expect generally when it comes to gunships being used is that you'll throw in a bunch of Karens and then do a drop of some kind, Reaver drop, Night drop, something. Like, Cloaky Gunship has a lot of great drop opportunities that can be done to really secure the opening or the opening minutes of the game. But we saw none yeah. of that. It was very conservative opening from Bakti Danta, pure Wasp. Now Wasp into Locust, but it's not, it's not typical and it's not typical for a reason. Not on a map this size, anyway. Still, it's not totally over. BRB is managing to at least hold the line reasonably well at the top side of the map, but it feels like a matter of time. Slowly but surely, yeah. Randy, Randy and Pro as a whole are just building their armies, keeping them relatively alive, taking out defenses where useful, and then backing off, clearing out things. Like, Randy's... Randy's showing basically what they're all doing is they're yeah. not attacking too aggressively. They're just hitting the targets they need to hit when they need to hit them and dealing with them. Well, 
Geo dead. No, go over the factory Factor instead. Did? That's not enough. Uh, they don't have to kill it though. No. Because the two of them died on the way in. And the Nimbus can't tank most of the damage. It, and the, yeah, wow. Nimbus, Nimbus too good. Nerf Nimbus. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Nimbus is the out. only thing Gunship's got going for it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, we don't nerf Nimbus. We need Nimbus. <laughs> um, yeah, bring back, bring back uh, Locust to 180 and increase DPS. And there you go. We have spam over the unit. Um, however, I'm pretty sure... Uh, that Geo is yeah, Geo, quite big. Fruity's dead. Fruity's Geo is gone as well, is thanks to the four ducks. four maces? That is for me. Uh, five maces? Never yep. mind. Okay, yeah. That's weird. Not oh, really. Go. Yeah, this no, I mean, the thing is, you got to remember that riot units are basically just assault units with less HP. Yeah. So, they're really good as just damage units. They just don't last very long. But if you have support on top of that, either in the case of Lico's or, in this case, Scalpels as well, they do a great job. So as it stands, this is pro taking it before the 10 minute mark. Yep. Well, actually, I should say that's up to Bhakti Vedanta. They are still thinking there's a chance, which I, I mean, I admire, I admire their tenacity, but yeah, they, they realize there is no way out of this. Yeah, no. Throw in the towel, and that is pro moving on to the winner's finals to fight MFG. Yep. <sighs> wow, this... All right, well, it's turned out to be faster than I expected. I was yeah, I was, like, I was banking <laughs> on a half an hour per game. Uh, I think I think uh, BRB ASKM might actually end up being half an hour per game, and MFG losers bracket winner it will probably be a lot longer. I think the next two matches are uh, pro MFG is actually probably going to be pretty good. Yeah, I think it will. I, be. I actually look forward to. It. I, MFG was looks very solid in terms of fundamentals, so. I just, I mean, I agree, so I don't think it'll be a fast game, but I do think that it's still going to be an uphill struggle. Because Pro, like, MFG is good at fundamentals, but Pro has fundamentals completely on lock. Yeah. This is a... Uh... All right. Of course, that's also the question of, you know, what happens if MFG tries to do the same thing they did against ASKM? I mean, Pro, I expect, is going to... Well, I mean, first off, they're going to have air, most likely, because it exists. Which means that they're probably going to be able to just completely wreck face if that happens. I mean, throw in a leak over two and the commanders are dead. So, I think ASKM might actually be DQing, for whatever reason. I'm not sure why, what? but... Yeah. They, I pinged pin when they said they were DQing, which is strange. Oh. Well, I'm okay. asking them why. Hey, it's... I'm a trip. Pro MFG still happens either way. Yeah, no, we're we're hanging on to that. We're just waiting for that match to be organized. Actually, I think. Is MFG already. Oh, MFG's kind of already in here. Yeah. I guess might yeah, as well just. just title it. Yeah, I'm just thinking, yeah. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it sounds like it's just the players might no longer be... Oh, they were trying to do BSB and BRB and AS Cam in here. Well, whatever. Sounds like a total loss of morale. So... No, don't... You don't need to change it. It looks like they're just gonna... Are they just gonna play it? Because... Are we not going to change it for for replays? We are titling for replays. I just don't think it's going to be the. So it's well, it's pro MFGs. So. Well. Unless we're going to move. Yeah. I. Well, whatever happens, it'll be sorted out pretty quickly. Excuse me, I am playing. Oh, the little green bit. That's limit. Okay. what I meant. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Oh, headaches. Um. Yeah, it looks like a towel throw on the part of his cam. That's so strange. I was like, why would they? Eh, they, they were going to be fine. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. It's just... It's just morale. So... That's how it goes sometimes. I, I totally understand. 
Yeah. Yeah, Zero K is very much so unlike FGC, because FGC, you, your morale can tank and then go right back up in the middle of a best of three, and in this game, it's just like, it's, oh, well, just an uphill climb. It's harder. The thing is, I mean, you got to remember the difference between a fighting game and an RTS is that an RTS, typically, you don't have a lot of opportunity to come back. Like, in a fighting game, it doesn't matter how what has happened prior, you always have a chance of turning the match around. Whereas in an RTS, yeah. it's like, if you had something go wrong at the beginning, you're just done. Yeah. Well, it depends on the game. Some are a little more forgiving than others in that respect, but... Zero K in particular is a game where if you mess up at the beginning, you're basically done. Yeah, there's no... No comebacks. Um, Not no comebacks, but it's... Until, like, I'd say... Hard. You have to establish yourself out to about 20, 25 mil per second if you want to be able to get a comeback. Yeah. If you haven't managed to do that securely, then no, you don't have a chance. But yeah, if it comes to the right. point where you start getting... It's just, it's the early game where it becomes really difficult. But in 3v3, it's not as big of a deal, so I don't know. Nice. Okay, so MFG bans first. Okay. So with that, we are probably... Well, we're definitely looking at a situation where MFG could get Fallen Dell or a similarly laney map that allows them to go for the same strategy again. Yeah. They might as well too. I mean, if they lose this, they have to. They fight BRB and, well, okay, they. It's kind of an even match, so. That might not work out for them, but again, they do still have a second chance if they win against BRB to, see if they can be pro if they lose now. Yeah, I think um, I think, MF was MFG the one that banned all the water maps, or is that AKSM? I that was remember. ASCAM. <laughs> that was ASCAM. So. I think given last game, uh, safe option is no tangerine, uh, and preferably get rid of probably small battlefield. I think when they play in lanes, they're a lot better. Um, well, they can I only think... get rid of one. Pro takes pro gets two bans. Oh, pro does get two. Bans. Yeah, and okay. I think if they know what's going on, they're probably banned fallen null and intersection. And yeah. I would say tangerine is probably the best ban for MFG. I totally agree with that. Yeah, definitely. Or actually, well, okay, I think Tangerine's probably the... Actually, maybe not. Shimmer Shore might be a better ban. It might be. Uh, Shimmer Shore feels like or no, a little bit more convinced. No, wait, no, 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 no. There's only one pick. MFG is the only pick. What am I thinking? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll be right back. I'm going to go grab a tissue. Keep forgetting that the, it's the one pick, so MFG doesn't really have to worry about what they ban. It's just a matter of what they allow to be banned. So they take out Tangerine, then that's not a bad idea, but it also... I don't know. I feel like a dead band for them. Well, let's see how this plays out, as they are going to go for something. All right, well, Shimmer Shore is their first ban, which, again, that kind of makes sense, considering... Wait, no, again, there's not a possibility of it being picked on them. I actually don't know why they worried about that, but whatever. Shimmer is out. Was the one they banned last time. It's the one they banned this time. Now we have Pro with two bans, as we... will actually be setting that up, because Pro is the one of the bans that has to worry about what gets picked. Yep. I guess you're doing it to VC. Yeah, teams teams need to know that like Discord VC is really good for Discord voice chat, really good for these types of events. I mean, I can see Mumble um, Clan not using it because they're used to Mumble, but yeah, everyone else, yeah, there's a bunch of rooms, just public, just jump in. All right, Sapphire, and Tangerine, and oh, Sapphire, Sapphire and are Tangerine. both Ooh. really that... that's spicy. I don't. I mean, Sapphire, I can see. Actually, that makes sense to me. Tangerine, though, I don't know why Pro would expect that MFG would want Tangerine. Yeah, I'm not sure either. It's just that was that's just strange. Yeah. By the way, in, th in a best of three, is that no? It's, it's picked every time, isn't it? It's not all picked at once. 
Uh, yeah, so in best of three, you do the process the first time, and then after game one, I think um, the l winning team gets three bans on loser t losing team picks. I'm kind of surprised that doesn't just happen in the first place. Like, the one who loses the coin flip bans and the winner of the coin flip picks from the remaining maps. It's It could happen that way. Um, I actually thought about this when I made that rule, and I know there's a reason why it is like it is, and I'm trying to remember what my reasoning was. Um, the only reason I could I'm think is if there was two picks. If we had best of three where both teams went back and forth picking, like it was three, like, ban, like team one bans one, team two bans two, team one bans one, team one picks one, team two picks one, team one picks one. In that yeah, case, it would make mean, sense. It's mainly just there to make sure that team one gets to to play on one map that they really don't want to play on. But they get to pick it. They don't have to worry about that. They, they do get to pick it, but it does force the other team to not burn one of their bands on that map, if that makes sense. It's... I, it just... It makes them ban other maps than the one that they like. They're already like, yeah, we don't want to play on this. So it's it's strange. It needs revisions still. It's I, not I don't perfect, know. I, I still think unless it's multiple, unless both sides are picking, it doesn't make sense to have both sides ban. Yeah, it's it's zero k map pools, so it's already weird. <laughs> True. I don't think that's relevant. Anyway, that's that's whatever. What is, what is going on in the chat? I don't know. Everyone's getting <laughs> all about this. <laughs> I'm just going to tell them to play. Okay, we're on Fallen Dell again. All right. Uh, let's just say there's a reason why I don't show the in-game chat during the stream. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> oh, sometimes it's genuinely funny, and then sometimes we just end up with like so some really weird stuff going on. Yeah, this is, this is one of those really weird times. It's almost always really yeah. weird. So yeah, Fallen Dell, which means that we know what we're going to have is the entirety of MFG going for massive commanders and pro having to deal with that. Yep. Although I think it, pro is likely to go for a factory spread that's a bit better suited. I mean, even if they have just have air, they're going to have Lecos. They're going to have Thunderbirds. If they go for anything, like, really the only problem with the, with ASKM's setup is that they went for fa no factory that really had strong counters. Like, Phantom was the only one. The other two factories didn't have a whole lot that would deal with a single heavy unit easily. I don't expect... I don't know. I would find it, I would find it real funny if I just see, like... Randy fan rush uh rush strider factory for ultimate and that just be really funny to me that would make um, sense that would actually be a really good sense. idea it would be a really good idea and i just laugh if it happens because it's like yeah it's just, just i just, just counter like the value it's like screw you we, we know what you're gonna do forget it <laughs> playing league of legends now we have character bands <laughs> yeah but um i think i don't okay so double spot Oh, yeah, okay, spider. Is, we have venom. Wait, double jump bot. Double jump bot now. Oh <laughs> yeah, right. Sorry for yeah. Oh, wait, wait. Oh no, he didn't mean to get it. <laughs> oh oh no. boy. And we saw how spiders <laughs> worked last time. There was actually a really good reason for it: is the independent support armies. However, Thirksy can build a spider a spider plate. That's yeah. I just build spider plate. It's it's like one eighty, isn't it? Mm, I think it's one fifty, uh... but not hundred percent sure. It's something like that. Oops. Ow. Over here. Scooter and... plate is 150, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. So yeah. For the cost of less than a venom? Less than a pyro. You can have yeah. less than a pyro. You can have you can have more unit. Well, anyway. Small mistake, but that's not really I mean it's the support strategy, but that's about it. However, again, we have we have spiders coming in here from pro as well. Randy going for that, which is it's a great idea because spiders get you venoms. So in case there is that massive commander strategy coming up again, sorry, not venoms, widows. Just widow them out. Yeah, like that's really well, what ASKM needed last game was some way of doing something like widowing them out, and that's exactly what Pro has. Man, Zao is 
good at the game. <laughs> it's just, I'm gonna go look up his account right now because I want to see. But like, he is expanding really fast. <laughs> yeah, is... they are, and relatively safely too. Yeah, it's crazy. I was like, oh. Especially considering uh... that their their side is a little bit short on numbers for support on the north side. Uh. That being said, okay, so so what's up with Zhao? He has played. Oh, okay, so his shoot. first login is is sixteen months ago. Done making that screen mistake. Sorry about that, guys. I meant to show the screen. Oh, uh, give the bracket up. I don't Matt know Pitt. why I I have it in a position where that should never happen, and yet it happened. It's not yeah. last few tourneys were fine. Most of Lobster Roll was fine after I moved the OBS to my left monitor. It was fine. Yeah. I just yeah. <laughs> So Zhao, Zhao's account is 16 months old, but he's only played 59 games. Okay, which that's is still pretty strong. Still pretty pretty whack for for 59 games. Also, uh, their MFG commander did. Yeah, Thirksy going down immediately, getting just assassinated. I mean, Pro knows well enough that's not something they want to leave alive. Kind of. I mean, I, game is closed. Yeah, I do think that was actually what? directly related to the fact that they went for jump bots. RTW saying the game is not on stream. It's that a minute delay. There's a minute delay on stream, so that's why. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, okay. Makes sense. Yeah, thankfully it was only a couple uh, minutes before it got pointed out. I'm sorry about that, guys. I haven't had this issue come up for a few weeks, and I thought I had it solved. But I don't know any better solution than what I have now, honestly. <laughs> Unless there was some plug into, like, auto switch when the game loads or something which yeah that's the only thing i can think to, of we just need to write a zero k widget oh that's a very smart thunderbird very i mean that's what i was saying before is that thunderbirds are going to be a on. real tool for dealing with the stuff that uh, mfg is throwing out there but i expect it to just be the commander still overall that's just amazingly powerful that being said sal yeah. still has that south side pretty much unlock and no one's tried to can no one's tried to contest it yet yeah yeah you uh for for people watching and seeing the chat, uh, the reason you can't jump when you get thunderbirded is because you are stunned and not disarmed. Disarmed and stunned are both different. Uh, no, 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 no. That's you can't jump when you're disarmed. You, I thought you could jump when disarmed but not stunned. Because yeah, so did I, but apparently you can't. I apparently because no, well, thunderbird does stun or does it? No, it does disarm. You can still move, but. I have to. Maybe there's a coding thing that makes jumping uh, count no, as a weapon. Uh, lightning does do stun time, and let me check on. It's Rakuten. Different Rakuten. Yeah, Rakuten's also disarmed, but it's they both have a lightning effect. One of them is just blue, and the other one's gray. Yeah. Strange. Readability. What's that? Yup. Not things we have in zero. That's not okay. That that's unfair. Right? We. I mean, there is quite <laughs> we, a bit of readability. readability. It's just we have readability, just not in the in the space click bar. It's not in the space click thing. Um, although I really do like the space click thing. The fact that I can access unit stats in the game instead of like having to go out of the game to a wiki to look at them is real cool. Yep. Uh, but then there's certain quirks like how does how do jump affected thing. by Thunderbird is the <laughs> thing that is might possibly be a bug actually. I, would... I wish fighting games just had frame data in a menu where I could click on them and see how things work. That'd be very cool, but guess what? They don't. Only Zero K gets to have that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, them fighting hers and Skull Girls have that, but otherwise, yeah. Yeah. Also, uh, someone's commander's about to die, because they have they have the, the magic number of ravens up for commander bombs, so... They do indeed. Actually, they are... wait, wait, wait. Sorry, the magic number changed, because six... Yes, that's 4,800 damage, but... These commanders have been upgraded quite a bit. Rar's commander, if it can not get killed immediately, like if one of the ravens dies going for Rar's commander, it could survive. Because the next upgrade will get it yeah. past 4,800 health. Two this game actually doesn't it. look too bad, but I think this glaive right in the middle is going to be rough. Well, it's being scared, though. It's a little skittish. Still going for it, though. Gets the one, one metal extractor. Thunderbird, where did Thunderbird hit? 
Ah, Thunderbird's uh, stopping Thunderbird. Zao's forces from advancing yeah. over to the south. That doesn't really make a difference, though, because Zao... Actually, oh, never mind. That makes all the difference. Uh, Zao's commander's dead. Yep. Did not get a chance to upgrade past 4,800 HP. Cost of one Raven, but absolutely worth it. Now, Rar is the only one on MFG with a commander. For a team that's been relying almost entirely on big commander strats, they have already lost two-thirds of what is effectively their primary support or primary strike force. Yeah. However, Rar is past that magic point. There needs to be seven Ravens to kill them. Or maybe not. I mean... Oh, this is some micro. I'm seeing... Ooh, that's some spicy micro. This yeah. man got hit by two... Hit by uh, two Ronin... Two Ronin missiles, and that was it. Wow. Uh, Commander's actually in... Yeah. Uh, I think uh, I think the Commander's low enough to where six can do it right now, because it's at 82%. Oh, you're right. Yeah, it's, it's 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. But yeah, it's about to same time, though, I'm thinking more looking at what exists got going on here with all of these knights. All of these yep. cloaked knights. The reason why I have a one minute delay on the stream. Yeah. And you know, there's no screening in this matchup unless the other person like builds tons of fleas in the middle game. So it's like that's not going to get seen until it makes it to the base because nobody cares about mid. Not with all, not with the dearth of metal extractors, that's for sure. So with that, the knights are about 30 seconds away from utterly wrecking the base. On top of the fact that fleas are coming in and just dealing some damage here and there, but that's not the real story. That's just a little prelude. The real story Wait, is coming up. The pyro? Okay. I was like, why did the pyro not shoot the, the flea? Uh, yeah, the real the real stuff is about to begin now. Although they aren't terribly ill-equipped to deal with it, they're about to be. I would say even they're, they're they can deal with it. Mm, that's the not right too badly. Most of their the right backs are moving though. away though. Is the, yeah, they because nobody knows. Oh, this pyro is about to fight, figure out. Yep, something. there it oh, is. Oh, there we go. A little bit in advance, but it still wow. should be fine. I mean, knights are tough. They can what? just power through. They've. They've made uh, most yeah, of the this trip. This is probably GG. This is probably GG. Yeah. Caretakers go down. The factories are soon to follow. Puppies are trying to help, but not even a single knight has gone down yet. And uh, there's a massive glaive raid going on in the south, but there's also a juggle knot, so I'm not sure how that's going to go. I don't know if it'll matter. But, uh, juggle knot typically hard loses to recluse, so. Typically, although it could just jump in and. Go for broke. Yeah. Don't really know that that's going to help. However, now, again, at this point, there's not a whole lot. I kind of wish that Thirksy had built a plate. Like, if they built a spider plate, this, I think, wouldn't be in the same situation. Like, yeah, they plopped yeah. jump. Okay, but that's a recoverable mistake. Uh, yo, Zao's commander. Jump! Rar's commander about to die. Oh, so. maybe? There's yeah. There's two widows right next to it. Yeah, that's there it is. Well, I don't know. There's enough of a support force that it might not go down immediately. I mean, it's got 23 seconds before it's coming back. Oh up. no! Rip, with, rip five hadn't been old widows. Uh, I think the the slings will probably do a pretty good number on it. They will. I think it's a matter of support until the ravens yeah, get in here. Uh, yeah, there's there's knights. This is. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Yep. You're right. So with the knights coming in here, that will clean up the commander, and with that, should clean up the game, allowing Pro to move on to the grand finals. Yep. So there is not a whole lot left MFG has going for them. Although, hey, okay, Spider Plate was built. Credit to Thirksy, they did build the Spider Plate eventually, but not plopping it, I suppose, was still the... Definitely a morale killer, if nothing else. Definitely. And that should be GG, expecting uh, the resign vote. Yeah, Rar is definitely out. I mean, the other two are... The other two have nothing to play with. Except yeah. Zao with five Pyros. The last defiant five pyros, four, three, three pyros coming in here. Three and that is going to be Zhao's last stand. Now a couple of moderators as well, but now there's the resign vote. Zhao is the last one to throw in and they're going to not even be able to have the opportunity. They've lost their entire army. They have a razor left. There's the, there is the table throw. Is that line. is pro moving on to the grand finals. After completely dominating that match, that 
that early commander kill on Thirksy, that was that sealed it. I mean, after that, it was uphill struggle, and I, I will admit there was a decent push coming in there from the from MFG, but they just yeah. they still seem to focus heavily on the commander play, even though they had lost one of their commanders, and they kind of depended on all three the first game. Yep. All right, I gotta get off here. Um, I'll also be running a tournament, but I have some other stuff to take care of as well, running alongside it. So I will see you guys later. Thank you, Shadow Fury, for letting me co-commentate for the little bit. All right, well, that's perfect timing as we're gonna be moving on to a quick break. So stay tuned as I will be back on my own for the Losers Finals. And thanks for helping out, bro.